Now what is going to happen is all this leakage current or nothing but the standby current because this all are occurring when the transistor is in the off state at least the first one and this is due to the reverse bias condition and this is due to the thin oxide. What happens is this standby current leads to static power dissipation which we have seen in the previous clip the static power dissipation is nothing but I static into VDD and I static is nothing but the combination of all these three currents. So static power dissipation in one SRM cell increases and we have millions of such on one IC if that leakage current will contribute to a major part of static power dissipation which becomes quite a challenging designing parameter because subthreshold conduction is a major villain here. So the solution here is that you use variable or high threshold voltage transistors because we know that subthreshold current is inversely proportional or I would say that if you increase your threshold voltage your subthreshold current would reduce but if we keep on increasing our threshold voltage to a very high value we already know that challenging the SRM transistor so the read and write operation is itself quite intimidating and increasing the threshold voltage there can make it further more challenging so this is quite a great challenging parameter which we need to understand the other technique which one can use is nothing but multiple threshold CMOS circuits where you have multiple threshold voltages used for different transistors in your block which will help us in reducing our subthreshold current and overall reducing our leakage current which in turn will reduce our static power dissipation. So this is just an overview of leakage current in SRAM. For a DRAM, they are both DRAMs, don't get intimidated. So this is one one cell of DRAM this is the other one this is the bit line this is the word line I word line I plus one and this is nothing but the capacitor where your charge would be stored very similar to SRAM DRAM also has first and foremost we know that we need a refresh mechanism in DRAM because this is a capacitor right this is the word line this is my bit line suppose my word line was high and my capacitor was charged to VDD now my word line has gone low then this capacitor should be able to store its charge but we have already seen in the previous clip that there is chart leakage which takes place due to which this chart might be lost and hence we need a refresh mechanism. Now what all contributes to leakage current in case of DRAM? Very similar again when the transistor is off we have subthreshold current, PN junction, reverse bias, diode. So PN junction, reverse bias, diode current. Then we have tunneling current again very similar. And one more additional which we have is I cell to cell current which I have shown here. This is the leakage current across the field oxide. When we fabricate, we have a field oxide and this is the leakage current across that field oxide. And as we know that the minimum feature size is scaled down as I just mentioned, right? With scaling which is taking place, the feature size is reducing. That means W is reducing, the length is reducing, your terminal voltage is also you are trying to scale down. The junction current or the reverse bias pin junction current takes a very small value. I cell to cell is also very negligible because of the thick fill oxide these days which are used in trench isolation technique, trench capacitance we have already discussed that as well. So what is going to be a challenge again here also is a subthreshold current which is a function of the threshold voltage. But unlike SRAM where there is a lot of designing challenge for your read and write stability here you can have higher VT transistors and higher VT or difference in source to body terminals will lead to body effect or a substrate bias effect which leads to a higher voltage transistor can be done to increase your threshold voltage and for the same reason on chip you have negative voltage generator which is widely used in DRAM chips. Negative voltage generator means you are trying to ensure that your source and body are not at the same potential. To ensure that happens you can connect one of your terminal towards a negative voltage or negative supply also and that will ensure that there is a body effect which is present and which will lead to an increase in your threshold voltage which will help you in reducing your threshold current because this is more critical in DRAM than in SRAM. SRAM it leads to higher power but in DRAM you might lose your charge and hence you need your refresh circuits. So I think that's about it for the leakage currents in SRAM and DRAM. I hope you have followed it. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.